quick little video today. I've got a little sponsorship video from PCB Way. Little thing I wanted to build for a while now. And I've already built one because I had to use one. I've got some other things here as well. These are the circuit boards for the HP 3400A, the A6, which is the chocolate amp board. I've also built one of those too, but that's a big video. So PC Way sent me these. So you got the E by E32 law modules, which is one of these. You can get different frequencies and stuff, and you've got a standard pinout, all got the same pinouts on them. Programming these, there's different ways you can do it in your firmware of your app, or you know, if you're actually going to use these things on, which is one of the ways I do them. But sometimes you want to set them as a default settings before you build them into a project, and you have to use a bit of PC software and one of these programmers like this, for example. Right, this is set to 3.3 volts because this is what these things want. So you can use these programmers, but obviously you need to plug this into this, and the pinout's not the same. So Simple little board, it's just an adapter board. So you've got a 5 up feed to the VCC, ground ground, DTR is not used, CTS is not used, M1 and M2, because you're programming this thing, they're tied to the VCC line, and RXTX also go through to the RXTX up here. On the rear, I've got some resistors here, just some little 1K resistors. Probably doesn't really need them, but it's just a safeguard, really. The E32 modules, they prefer 3.3 volts. They are kind of 5 volt tolerant, but if your voltage is slightly high on your adapter from a USB port, because it could be coming straight through, for example, you might have some problems. So that's a precaution. I've put some 1K resistors in here just to offer a little bit of a insurance policy. I mean, you could probably just bridge and be fine. When I programmed these things in the past, I used a breadboard. I put both modules into a breadboard and programmed it that way. And I was a bit tired of doing that, which is why I made these. Now, there is one little mistake on here. In fact, it's quite a big mistake. It's a terminal mistake. I found out the hard way. I think I made this thing, I don't know, designed it about, I don't know, probably 20 minutes, I think. It wasn't much at all to build this board up. Because it's such a simple design, I never did electrical check on it. Because I looked at it and thought, oh, yeah, that looks okay. You know, nothing really to check there. Anyway, I should have done electrical check because I made a mistake. Can you spot it? It's on this side. No? So this is as close as I can get. Can you see it now? No? Yeah, it wasn't obvious to me either. Down this side of these pins, when I was doing the layout before I put the um, flooded screen in, I had an earth track running up and around to this ground here. And when I was moving things around slightly, making space for the text, I moved this over very slightly. And what happened is it's moved this over, and directly out the side of all these pads is a track that comes vertically. But you can't see it because obviously it's the flooded plane, right? There's a track coming out the side of all these. Short them all out. So we've got the Fluke 175 here. Got on continuity. Ground pad. Yeah, that ain't right. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually going to make this available to people. I've already fixed the design. Obviously I'm going to make the broken design available to people. So I actually built one up already. So instead of assembling one, I'm going to show you one I built. So there's the built version. On this one here, you can just see that I could cut mark here. What I ended up doing is I just ran a knife between each each side of the pad your clearance. So I just extended those clearances out to the side, each one, so I made a whole bunch of little cuts, what's that, 10 cuts, that way, horizontally, because it's only on the right of that, you know, the one big cut was straight in the back of that lot, and that separated those pads from the ground plane and that sorted it out. So this one does actually work. And the idea, so on the side header here, you get the programmer, that plugs in this side, like that, and on the top header here, you get the E32 module and you plug it in this side, like that. And there you go, simple as that. You plug this into your USB port on the computer and you can use the eByte software to program the thing. And it saves messing around with a lot of things. Just makes it a lot easier. Now part of this is a project I've been working on. Again, I've, I keep revisiting things and I was actually building some more modules. I've already got a set of four, well four pairs, these things work in combinations. I had to build some more and I had to use some new modules and stuff like that and program them, what have you. Now, I actually had some problems with these e-bike modules. Since we're talking about e-bike modules, I should talk about this now because it's not like you would come across this particular problem. I came across this problem and I tried to find a solution to it online. Nobody mentioned it anywhere. I could not find any references to the problem I was having. Now, what it was, on the UART communication for these modules to the microcontroller, 
The default is 9600 board. Now I usually use 19200 or whatever it is. And that's what I've been using for years, a couple of years, two, three years since I started using these things. And that's been working fine. But I've got some new modules and that speed didn't work anymore. I never did 9600. And 38.4, that didn't work either. And I found I had to go up to 57.6, now 57,600 bald to get the serial UART to communicate. It was just garbaging. You get a pair of modules, so you get the UART communication coming in. Is that 38.4 is what I was actually using on both ends to the microcontroller. So microcontroller's going one end, data's going in. Microcontroller on the other end, data coming out is garbage. It's like, well, why? I tried all these different board rates. And I tried going down, thinking oh, it must be interference or something that's making it messed up, so a slower board rate should make it more resistant to interference. None of them worked. Even the standard 9600 just didn't work. I just could not get the things to communicate. I was getting garbage coming out at one end. Sometimes I'd get correct information. Sometimes you'd be right. Probably one in ten times what was coming out was right. And the rest of the time it's garbage coming out. It was just getting mutilated. And I found I had to use 57,600 board in order to get that problem solved. I just changed that ball rate, went up to 5700 and suddenly the problem's gone. Like that. Boom. It's working fine now on the new modules. So this is an older module and this was fine. This one wasn't affected by it. But the newer ones, which is like the um, 900T20D for example, which are the other ones which I've, I've shown in my mailbag and stuff like that, those are having that problem. And by increasing the ball rate to 57.6, the problem went away. Very weird. on my PC Way page I think my projects or whatever it is on there I'll put a link down below for these modules so you can get them yourself thanks to PC Way for the sponsorship and provide these to me at no cost and hopefully you'll find these useful and the ones I'll put up will be the fixed ones this is version 1 1.1 1 .1 will be the fixed version I promise check out the videos down below subscribe if you're not already subscribed Patreon support link over there if you want to support the channel have to buy things to do things with I don't know usually test gear so I can fix it Catch you later.